Let us see what we have done in the last year. And I will go now through my presentation. This is the group from the partners where we work together. Uh, and this is the first one gigawatt uh, company, what we say, what we have produced last year. These are nine partners. In these nine partners, there are a lot of fabs. It's not only nine fabs, it's a lot of fabs behind here. Yeah. We have worked together for the whole year, and we have met us uh, several times. So every two months, we have a meeting, sometimes also with the supplier. And I think this was a good part that we worked together with the supplier. <clears throat> and this is also in the mindset what the group is doing. Standardization, what Heinz have said before, is not as that we will have only the standardization on the customer side. Standardization is to enabling the business for the whole world for the PV. And I think this is necessary. If you look to other industries, maybe to the automotive industry, maybe to the wood industry, or to other machineries, you can only see growing was necessary a part of standardization. The standardization in, in ship Building, in shipbuilding, you can see now a ship is built at the moment not only as one part, there is different parts in different locations and you put it together. This is only possible that you have a standardization. Also for the photovoltaic, I think it's very important that we are looking for that we come to the same point. On this slide, you can see the growth worldwide. This was the last <coughs> forecast that we get with the 30 gigawatts in 2012. On the left side, there is only that investment what we are doing in Germany. And astonished, it's more than three billion, three milliards in, uh, euros. But the enabling growth is a little bit on a critical path. The critical path means behind there, if when we are installing in this time what we have done in the past, then we get problems. We get problems. Sometimes we are not early enough on the production side. We have not the quality, and this is the major issue of what we get here. We are only on the quality fast as we have in the past, and that is not enough. Quality means not only what we are producing, quality means also the partnership. Quality means how you deliver equipment and how we can take the equipment in our processes, how we control our processes and so on. This means also quality. At the end of the day, it's a cost. This worldwide crisis, what we have, I think it's positive for our industry. Why it's positive? We now jumped in six to eight weeks, more than two to three years closer to the net parity. The price is falling down, yes. But on the other side, it makes only sense that you are producing PV without of finding and so on. The finding was absolutely necessary to grow up this industry into starting. But now it's our part, together with our suppliers, that we make the cheapest price. This price, what we need, that we get also the grid parity in countries, look like Italy, now we have Rigid, and also in Germany, maybe also later on in Spain. That is not so easy, but it's possible. And if you look over the sea and you go to the Americans, maybe they are starting a new program and I hope that we are also in this program with the European photovoltaic industry. What we have done, we have made a benchmark. I said it before, uh, some people are astonished. You never can do benchmarks here, so uh, everything is uh, secure. Top secret. Everybody have some secrets. So I say, why? So we decided what we have done also in semiconductor, we make lists. We make these lists together also with the supplier and we make a counting system. What we see now, it's an improving of the supplier and the performance, improving on the outgoing quality. <clears throat> and I'm proud here that I can say we have finished our pre-shipment test last week on Friday with a very huge company that they get a contract from us to one of our major fabs. And it's the first time that we have finished everything good. Everything good, including MES system. And for one year ago, nobody sees here and they say, okay, it's possible. It is possible. And it is not the only company. That is that what is the message when you work together. The cooperation between the supplier and manufacturers comes out to a joint development. I think this is also necessary that you are going up very fast to standardization and to bring the industry in another level. 
push standardization, common specification, standardization, machine suppliers. It's only about that you work together. If you do it only on one side, and I have my experience 27, 28 years in semiconductor in the microcontrollers, there's one huge company and they say, okay, this is the standard, they make the norm. That makes no sense. What we have to do, that we work together and to come faster then. And we're enabling the whole business with a lot of players in there. I know that. That brings me also on the supplier side to a dual vendor strategy. A dual vendor strategy, some vendors say when they have now the contract, they say, okay, it's not necessary. But at the end of the day, the participation on the quality, on the profit, also what's coming out is for both of us. And I think this is a different what we have done in the past. We have also to share our knowledge, but be careful what you are doing. We have absolutely clear rules that you have no problems with them. But on the other side, if you have a dual vendor strategy, you can enable your yield that you can see what is with vendor one and vendor two. What I like is that we make a roadmap from one part what, they, what we need from the suppliers and the suppliers need from us. So, and I think that is absolutely important for us that we are enabling this. Otherwise, you have no figures. If you only say, okay, you can sail enough, yes, while the market is huge enough, this is only the question how long. And now in this situation, I think there is a over <coughs> uh, capacity also on the supplier size, also on our size, and we have no uh, real roadmap what we are doing. So we are starting now also with this roadmap on the supplier side, and what we need also for the roadmap is a roadmap in technology. <coughs> we have looked to start this in the past. It wasn't easy. A lot of people don't understand so uh, real what is going on with the uh, standardization in the technology, but uh, that people, they have worked before in semiconductor and other industries, automotive and so on. Without this, you cannot enable the business. Absolutely clear. Both sides have to know what are the next generation or the generation after there. And I think a very important thing is also this not reinvent the wheel. Everybody is looking, starting in the morning with a quarter, at the end of the day is a circle, so I think that we have known, and go only in the best practice sharing. This brings me also that we are, make a joint development, and joint development is also allowed between suppliers and suppliers, customer to customers, and all in these parts. On this slide, you can see the criteria, what, uh, what we have uh, voted for, that you can see a major part is technology. And this is a little bit different. <clears throat> then very important is the quality, outgoing quality, quality of service, quality of everything. IT software at the moment is voted by 8%. I think it's growing up in the future. Equipment flexibility and handling, a major point was also in the past. There we have no standardization in the high where we are working. Then the maintenance and customer service comes more and more important in the past, so they have a fully contract with maybe sometimes of the customers, sometimes it's from the suppliers. I think in the future that we have a mix, or we have a third party in there, what we are doing also in other countries. Then comes the cost with 12%, delivery performance, business valuation and trainings. Here you can see the customer satisfaction, what is going there, how many companies uh, have voted. You can see six uh, companies have given feedback. Uh, the results now in process steps, to, you can see for the whole. For wet chemical, in the average, you can see is 73. It's a little bit under there. Different, uh, it, uh, or a little bit more is in, in diffusion, coating, and thermal processing. I think it has long history also, and it works. But in the screen printing, it's not astonished for all the uh, customer have nearly about, and I uh, remind me on one of our uh, working group stays with the suppliers in uh, Weiberbrunhöfe, there was also the screen printers was always in, under discussion. I think it's a huge point in the future also. Automation, also important. Lasers, I think it's old in this uh, industry now for what we are using, and characterization is also pretty well. But on the characterization part, I think that we need also another improvement for the future. Now we come in a higher yield. And in the times where we have only 15% or lower, there you can see a lot of points uh, that is not important for the yields. But if you go up to 16 and, and uh, uh, 17, then you, uh, it's absolutely necessary that you have a very good characterization. 
If you look to the different suppliers here that you can see, uh, how is the voting by the different companies and what that you can see from 76 until to 61. Here you can see what we have done also with these votes that we say supplier A and supplier A was the same, <coughs> and, but with two customers. Here you can see the first uh, two columns that you can see, uh, three columns that you can see there's a difference in voting uh, in the technology. There's maybe not the same understanding what we have there, but it's a little bit different from six points. And supplier B, that you can see, okay, the system is working. On some suppliers, we have the same votes. On some suppliers, we have the difference, but we know where the difference is coming now. So and this is also this information what we will share later on from the working group with the suppliers only, supplier to supplier. We are not mixturing. It's also this what we see here, that we have not the name behind there and so on. We will not finger pointing. This is always uh, that what the uh, people saying, OK, when you make benchmarking, you make finger pointing. It's crazy. We will learn to each other, and we are growing faster. This is this what we are doing with benchmarking. The solution how we process is maybe on the other side, we have the joint PV group at the moment. We optimize our life cycle engineering, extended PV working groups, also together, joint development technology roadmap, what we need with the supplier in automation, suppliers in metrology, and suppliers in process. Suppliers in process, I think it's a little bit new here. What we are looking for is also that we uh, go to suppliers, they also offering then the process and optimize the process to in a landscape of different equipment. At the moment, you have only this uh, supplier process in the turnkey equipment, but not in the other sides. And now we are enabling uh, this business with the standardization and the MES system. There is the first time that we have the possibility that we make dual vendor strategy and we are very fast in, cha in changing equipment or we make a second parallel pass also in the equipment and uh, we work with two or three vendors on the same line. So that is the first time now possible. And I think we have, uh, we have to point out also the roadmap to understand what is the customer's target for the next two or three years so that we develop our equipment in a way that we match the needs. So we have learned that sizes on our side, for example, of uh, silicon blocks change every year once. And we hear that normally from our customer that they need now another machine with other sizes after they already ordered the new furnaces. So this is the way what we see. So in this way, as I said, joint development and roadmap are for me an essential way. What we need for the roadmap, SPC and advanced SPC. I think this is absolutely necessary for the future. Improving then the overall equipment efficiency. I agree completely that the growth here is the big challenge, that we are all together able to match what the market needs from us. And we all know that we have to make technology jumps. We cannot only put or push numbers of machines in a field and let them run. So in terms of wire saw, for example, this would mean fabs with thousands of wire saw. This is not possible. So we have to improve the technology together stand together and here the request from the supplier side towards the customer side is also the customer have to stand together and see what kind of standardization can they do that the system goes ahead. Uh, we have gone through um, a period of growth and um, well, so to speak um, a certain hype where delivery and growth and um, getting the equipment on time, getting the equipment fast, getting the equipment whatever it means. Um, so I think we, we certainly have to, to change this uh, sort of hype behavior and come to a more systematic approach regarding um, our relationship between supplier and, and um, customer. Um, Gerd mentioned um, the benchmarking, mentioned uh, basically the supplier performance. And um, there's always this uh, magical triangle between quality, delivery, and costs. And uh, we have to balance this uh, triangle and um, have to go through uh, things like um, standardization, dual sourcing, and um, 
uh, cooperation, cost of ownership. So these are the issues that we have to address. I say that my last speech, I was a little bit astonished. I'm hiring now this, uh, this industry and all the people have spoken about OEE and I always ask them and how you collect this. Okay, there we go with the watch once a year and we're counting and this was OEE, but this wasn't, doesn't work. Now we have the OEE that we are collecting the data online. Then we have a continuous improvement process. I think it is also necessary, the standardization. Decreasing the costs of what peak, and I think it's not on what peak, is the BOS, is the build of system. At the end of the day, our customer will only earn electrical energy, not more. And he is only asking how much I have to pay for, and how, not how much I have to pay for the sales, the modules, and so on. It's the whole supply chain. I think it's absolutely important for the BOS. And then we come to the grid parity, and when we have the grid parity, I think then it's a self-runner. Why you have not to buy it? It's a self-runner. At the moment, you get also 60 degrees of percentage uh, when you installed photovoltaic. Every banks are now discussing what you're doing with your money. They have only to invest in the solar parks. It's the best business what they can do. Okay, at the end of the day, we have clean energy. We have for everyone and forever. And now the last one, one sun, one word, it's Q-cells. Uh, this is only the part, I will go back to this. This is more important also. This is the important way what we have done in the uh, future to work together with this working group. And this part I will closing and to go to the panel discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.